Hi everybody, we are going to start the video for the first three learning targets of chapter one. This is Mrs. Ozier. And I am Ms. Perrier. And here we go. So we got to start by talking about slope. We already reviewed this in the introductory chapter, but basically you can think of slope a few different ways. The equation for slope is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. But on a graph, it's a lot easier to think of it as just rise over run. No matter what way you do it, you will, you're will going to end up with the slope, which will always be in a fraction. Quick reminder of notation. If you see uh, that's delta y, that's change in y over change in x, if you see it written as that. And a reminder, it's always the letter m. So we have a few different kinds of slopes. So our first slope here is our positive slope. And as you can see, it is positive as it is going in the upward direction. Negative slope, as we all know, is going to be negative. Our line's going in the downward direction. Zero slope is always going to be horizontal. And undefined slope is always up and down. Now, zero slope and undefined slope, people always kind of forget which one's which. So here's just a little friendly reminder. Zero slope is like it's not really difficult to kind of drive on, whereas an undefined slope, your car would fall right out. I always find that helpful, so I hope you do too. Equations of lines. We have two different forms of lines, and both of them, you know, it's kind of strategy which one you pick. The one you are most familiar with is y equals mx plus b, which is your slope-intercept form. But we have another one this year. Yes. This one is point-slope form, and uh, all that is is y, where y would be the y in your point minus y1 equals our slope, which is m, times x minus x1, and x would be our point again. So if we were to find this first piece of information, write an equation of a line with slope 1 half and y-intercept 3, because it's giving me a slope and an intercept, I would go with y equals mx plus b form. So I would, again, simple, or excuse me, substitute those values in. So 1 half goes in for x, and then 3 goes in for b. You wouldn't need to show all those steps. I was just trying to show it out with PowerPoint so that you could see them separately. But you would, again, slope would go in for your m, and the y-intercept is 3, so it's a plus 3. And then for the second one, we have write an equation using our slope and for a point. When you see that it needs to go through a point, then you know that you need to use point slope form because that's the only one that we have that uses the point. So you'll write, you'll write your equation out on the side and then you'll substitute in where it all goes. As you can see, the points go in where your y1 and x1s go. And reminder here that the equation has y minus y1. So when you plug in that negative 3, you need to make sure that you keep the negative on there. And a negative times a negative, we all know, is a plus. So it would be y plus 3 equals our slope, which is m 3 halves times x minus 2. Okay, so if we were to find the slope of each line here, we're going to notice something about the slope of the different lines. So on the left side, you have 2 over 1 by going rise over run. And on the right side, you're going to have Sorry, I'm going too quickly here. On the right side, you're going to have 2 over 1, but then a slope of negative 1 over 2 for the other line. So when that happens, the slopes of perpendicular lines are negative reciprocals. This is important. You want to make sure that you remember that. Okay. So for this one, determine whether line AB and line CD are parallel, perpendicular, or neither. So for our points here, we got A is negative 2, negative 5, B is 4, 7, C is 0, 2, and C is 0, comma 2, and D is 8, negative 2. So for this one, we need to figure out our slopes for both of these. So we need to find slope of A, B. So we plug that into our equation y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. And you did this a ton in the introductory packet, so you should be really familiar with this. If you prefer to graph it, realize that you can always grab a sheet of graph paper and graph it. Yes. So when you get it, it should be 12 over 6, and then we all know that AB equals 2, and then you're going to do the same exact thing, but for points C and D, you're going to plug them into that slope formula, and then make sure that you keep your negatives in there, so it should be negative 4 over 8, which is 1 half. So as you can see here, these two slopes are negative reciprocals of each other, so therefore it is perpendicular. 
So once you get to that last thing, you always want to ask yourself, are they the same? Are they negative reciprocals or are they neither? That's how you answer that question, but it all relies on slope. Slope is the key. All right, in the next one, we're going to graph the line that contains P negative 2, 1, and it's perpendicular to JK, and they gave us the endpoints of JK. So we start by plotting all of our points, of course. So P is at negative 2. Oh, sorry, I plotted J first. J is at negative 5, negative 4. K is at 0, negative 2. So that is the line that I want to make something perpendicular to. I know that I want whatever it is to go through the point negative 2, 1. So I start by that two fifths over there. I start by getting the slope of the current line I have. So JK has a slope of two fifths. I know that perpendicular lines have negative reciprocal slopes. So I write the negative reciprocal of that. And then instead of starting at like a y-intercept that you're used to counting slope from, we're going to start from point P because that's what they told us in the question. They said it, it needs to go through that point. So from point P, I count down 5 and right 2, or I count up 5 and left 2. Both will work. When I do that, I connect, and there we go. I have successfully uh, completed a perpendicular line to JK. So for this next one, using the one we just did as an example, please go ahead and try it. So start by plotting points F and G and connecting them. Plot point E separately. Find the slope of FG, and if I want it perpendicular, find the negative reciprocal slope. So go ahead and try that one on your own. You can pause it and play when you're ready to go. We will go over that in class. Okay. So the next one, we are using our point negative 2, 5, and we want to write the equation that is perpendicular to the equation that has y equals negative 1 half plus 5 and also goes through that point. So when you see that it needs to pass through a point, you should automatically know that we're using point slope form. So that equation right here. So then you need to figure out your slope first, which we all know is we need it to be perpendicular, right? So we need the negative reciprocal of 1 half, which we see here is negative 2 over 1 or negative 2. Then after you find your slope, you can plug in that point right there into the equation. And again, make sure it is a negative 2, so it turns positive into the equation. And then you can simplify it up nicely where you, can, you don't need to write it 2 over 1. Or if you prefer to, that's totally fine. But that is the equation that you should get. The other thing we like to point out is that this is an equation. I know you're used to having y by itself, but when it says what is an equation, this isn't an equation. If it, or this is an equation. If it says in a specific form, okay, then you got to rewrite it. But right now, that would be the answer. Okay, moving on to the next one, we're going to find an equation again. It's passing through a point, so I'm going to use that point slope form, but this time it wants it parallel. I can't currently tell what the slope of the equation they gave me is because it's not in slope intercept form. So I will start by getting y by itself, so I subtracted the one third. Now I can tell what my slope is. The reason that's important is because if I'm going to make an equation parallel to it, I need to know what the same slope will be. So from here, I can now substitute all my values into point slope form by putting negative one third in for slope and putting three and two in for the x and y. And it's that simple. To do it the other way, if you're not feeling confident with the point slope, if you start with slope intercept, you can substitute the 3 from the point they gave you in for y. You can substitute, oh, excuse me, for x, because that's your x value. You can substitute 2 in for y, and then you can substitute that negative 1 third in. You have to keep going, though, and solve for your y-intercept, and then you would finally finish by writing the entire equation out. So you can do it both ways, but once you get comfortable with this, it's just way, way easier, in my personal opinion. So for this one, we have two endpoints, negative 2, 4, and 4, negative 2. We have to find the equation that forms its perpendicular bisector. Okay, so now this one is kind of going up a notch because it's going to use something called the midpoint that we're going to talk about a little bit more in learning target 4, but it's it, this is that next level if you're ready for it. So perpendicular, we know we need the slope, step 1. So a slope is going to come from the slope equation, or you could, again, plot your points and count it by rise over run. So I have a slope of negative 1 after you go through all your substitution. Because I want it to be perpendicular, I need the perpendicular slope of that, which would be the negative reciprocal, which is just positive 1, because 1 over 1 flips to 1 over 1. From there, the point that I need is going to come from that word bisector. This is the first time you've encountered that word. Bisector means to cut in half. It means something that cuts another thing in half. 
So here's a formula. It's called the midpoint formula. Again, we'll deal with this a lot more later. But you would substitute your values in for your midpoint. And then that would be that other piece of information that we had in the other examples that you would then put into your point slope for. If this one was a lot, don't worry. This one, again, is kind of more advanced. If you can do the other examples, that's what we'll be working on in class. Okay. Remember, the thing you should walk away this video knowing when you walk into class is that parallel lines have the same slope. And perpendicular is negative reciprocal. That's it. We'll see you in class. Have a great day.